In this video, we're going to learn about graphical analysis of motion. Basically, it's to describe the motion of a car or an object based on the graph. And there are two types of graph that you're going to learn, namely the displacement time graph, or you can treat it as distant time graph. Another one will be your velocity time graph or your speed time graph. Now actually what's the difference between distance and displacement time? Basically as mentioned in the previous video, displacement is a vector quantity, direction is important, therefore it can be negative displacement, especially in the opposite direction. So if it's distant, which is a scalar, so everything will be just positive portion of the graph. Likewise for speed time graph, it will just be positive portion and if it's velocity, it can be a case where is negative velocity which we'll cover in the next video now let's go through the basic how are you going to describe the motion of the object based on the graph and we're going to tap on your knowledge for math which is finding the gradient for a graph y against x and you should be familiar when you look for gradient is actually rise over run or basically the change in the y over the change in the x. Now I want you to remember gradient is like the steepness of a slope, okay, how steep it is. And that is a very important point here. To make it easier to understand, you can imagine you're walking towards the right on the terrain. And let's take a look at the first example here. If you're walking along this path where it's totally flat, there's no steepness, no gradient at all. So I call it zero gradient. And let's take a look at this. If you are walking up this hill here and this hill, the steepness is always constant. So you can look at it, there's no change in the gradient. So I call it constant gradient. And for this one here, as you climb up slowly, you can see that your is getting less and less steep. So it's decreasing gradient. And for the last one over here, as you climb up, it's getting steeper and steeper so it's increasing gradient and for the graph on the right hand side you can in general you know that in math if the gradient is something going in this direction it's a positive gradient and if it's sloping down this way it's a negative gradient so that point is important let's take a look at the first part here as you walk to the right so if this is the terrain here, it's basically likewise, no, it's flat, there's no gradient here. And if it's going down this way, the steepness never changed. So it's constant gradient, but it's negative constant gradient. So for this case, as you climb down, it's getting steeper and steeper. So it's increasing gradient because the steepness increases. And because it's sloping this way, so it's negative increasing gradient. For the last one here, as you go down, it's getting less and less steep, so it's decreasing gradient, but it's negative decreasing gradient. So with this concept, we are going to bring you to the displacement time. For, uh, for easy understanding, like I said, you can think it of a distant time graph, okay, for the time being, and you don't need to worry whether it's scalar or vector for the time being. Now. One thing I want you to take note is for a distant time graph or displacement time graph, when I want to find the gradient, which is rise over run, my rise, my y-axis so-called, in this case, is my displacement over time. Or in other words, distant over time. And this should be familiar to you. Distant over time is basically your speed or your velocity. So the word the gradient now for this graph, displacement time graph, represent the speed or velocity. So I will just use displacement time and velocity, but speed and velocity is, is you can treat it the same. So let's start with the first one here. So if you're walking along here, as mentioned just now, this is const, uh, zero gradient and you replace the word gradient with your velocity. So this is, zero velocity so in other words this is at rest the object is at rest not moving next for this one as you climb up the slope the steepness never change 
so you can recall this is constant gradient but I'm going to replace the word gradient with velocity constant velocity or in other words constant speed next one as you climb up the slope is getting less and less steep here so it's decreasing gradient decreasing velocity or decreasing speed and for the next one here as you climb up it's getting steeper and steeper so you can remember it's increasing velocity or increasing speed and of course the last one over here is along the time axis here once again it's flat there's no change in the gradient so it's zero velocity zero speed or in other words at rest you may ask what's the difference between these two now if in this is the case let's say this is 10 meters it means to say at time equals to zero the object is 10 meters away from the reference ground okay the reference point so and it's just parked there it remains 10 meter away from the reference point as time goes by if at this point here that means to say the object is at the reference point and there's no distance no displacement between them so it's parked at the reference point next let's take a look at the one on the right hand side so for the first one is a there's no change in the gradient so it's a constant gradient but it's negative constant i replace the word gradient with velocity or in other words negative constant speed now what it means is it's basically moving in the opposite direction so if this is the reference point this object right now is 10 meters and it's moving back at constant speed because uh, moving to the right is positive so now since it's moving to the left it's considered a negative speed all right and if this for this case here as you go down it's getting steeper and steeper and you know that this is increasing gradient increasing velocity but it's negative that means to say it's going faster and faster in this direction and for the next one here as you go down the slope it's getting less and less steep so you can recall it's decreasing velocity decreasing speed but it's negative so it's moving back in a decreasing speed next let's take a look at the velocity time graph now as you can see the graphs are similar but one thing to take note is the gradient now for this case for velocity time curve is rise over run and in this case is change in the velocity over time and change in velocity if you can remember is like your final velocity minus initial velocity over time so that means to say your gradient actually represent the acceleration of the object if you're looking at a velocity time graph or so-called speed time graph so basically you just need to replace the word gradient with acceleration so let's try this so the first one here is zero gradient no change in the steepness zero gradient zero acceleration but you see take a look at this one also this is also zero acceleration so if i describe both as zero acceleration so you're not being specific enough so what's the difference between the two so over here the y-axis is a speed let's say it's 10 meter per second it means to say the car is traveling at constant velocity of 10 meter per second that means the is constant speed no change in the speed always 10 meter per second on the other hand over here so if you look at the y-axis the velocity is zero that means to say is zero acceleration but the car is at rest it's not moving next let's take a look at this so this one is constant gradient therefore is constant acceleration here as you climb up it's getting less and less steep so it's decreasing gradient decreasing acceleration and the last one over here is increasing gradient increasing acceleration some students are confused with this they think that decreasing acceleration means that the car is slowing down is decelerating actually it's not if you look at the y-axis here as time goes by the velocity the speed is still increasing 
It's just that every second the increment is getting smaller and smaller. So please do not have that kind of misconception. So in general, this three scenario here, whether it's decreasing acceleration, constant acceleration, or increasing acceleration, the velocity of the car is always increasing. Now let's take a look at the one on the right hand side. This is a constant gradient, constant acceleration, and because it's sloping this way, it's a negative constant acceleration. In other words, you can also call it constant deceleration. Because as you can see, as time goes by, the velocity is decreasing. So this is deceleration. And for this case, it's a negative increasing gradient, negative increasing acceleration. And likewise for this, this is getting less steep. So it's a negative decreasing acceleration or this one I can call it increasing deceleration and this one I can call it a decreasing deceleration so in all these three cases the car is slowing down it's just that the rate in which the velocity decreases is different now there's one more thing to the velocity time graph or speed time curve and that is the area underneath the graph now let's take a look at this if this is 10 meter per second and until here is 5 second normally when you want to find the distance covered by the car in that 5 second you some of you may think of speed equals uh, distance equals to speed times time which you are familiar with and you'll take 10 times 5 which is 50 meters so that will be a distance covered and if you look at it in another perspective, you can actually, what I'm doing 10 times 5 is basically looking for the area under the graph. So basically, when you want to find the distance traveled by the car, you can actually look at the area underneath the graph. Now, but which one is better? Do I just use the formula or I always think about distance equals to the area under the graph? So the better way is Think about the area because let me give you another example so this is a velocity time graph and in this case the car initial speed is zero and it undergoes a constant acceleration until 10 meter per second and likewise is five second so for this case if this is a scenario given to you i am not supposed to use distance equals to speed times time and take 10 times five okay because the speed is not constant that is the main thing for this scenario the speed is always changing so there's i cannot use this formula so basically when can you use this formula to find distance you can only use it when the speed is constant so for this case in other in all situation you it's better to fall on finding the area underneath the graph so in this case it will be the area of the triangle under the graph here which is half time base which is 5 times the height and that will be 25 meters and it makes sense because it starts from rest and in that 5 second even though the speed is increasing it will cover a shorter distance which is 25 meters compared to the other car which is traveling at constant speed of 10 meter per second throughout that 5 seconds in summary let's recap so there are basically two types of graphs that you need to know. Firstly, displacement time graph or distance time graph. There's only one thing that you need to know. The gradient represent the speed or velocity. Now, it's, there's no need for you to memorize. Just think of the usual way you find gradient. You take the y axis over the x distance over time. Naturally, you will remember its speed. So there's only one thing. And the area here does not mean anything. Next, we have the velocity time graph or the speed time graph. There are two things to remember. The gradient will represent the acceleration because it's a change in the velocity over time. So gradient represents acceleration and as mentioned just now, the area underneath the graph will represent the distance traveled by the car. Okay, so there are two things to take note of. So gradient and the area underneath the graph.